Hi everyone. My name is Anna and I am one of the consumer technology specialists at Midcontinent Public Library. Today we're going to talk about email safety and some tips that can help you make sure your account is as secure as possible. You've probably heard it before, but having a strong password is one of the biggest things that you can do and your first step to make your email account as secure as possible. So what do we mean when we say having a strong password? Currently, recommendations for a strong password include making it at least 10 to 14 characters long, using a combination of random words. It's also recommended that you change your passwords every 90 days and don't use the same password for multiple accounts. You also should try to avoid using personal information about yourself or your family as your password. So, for example, don't use your dog's name and your birth date as your password because these are things that someone could potentially find online or in person and put those things together and now they know your password. You also want to avoid one word passwords. So the shorter your password, the easier it's going to be to guess. And you also want to avoid some of the most common passwords. So I'm going to say some of the most common passwords currently are the core T123. So that is the first six keys on the top row of letters on the keyboard that's used in the United States, and then the numbers one, two, three. This is very easy to guess. People use it all the time. Also using just a string of numbers. So one of the most used passwords in the last year has been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Obviously, that's really easy to type in. It's also easy to guess. Other passwords that have shown up on commonly used password lists include the word password, as well as the word monkey. And I'm not sure how everyone has landed on the same animal, monkey, but it has been in the top 10 or top 20 of the most used passwords for years now. So those are specific ones definitely don't use. And try a combination of some of the other suggestions that we gave you just a moment ago. Another thing that you can implement to secure your email account is to use two-factor or multi-factor authentication. So what this does is it adds an extra layer of protection to your account by requesting either information or details that are going to be unique to you. And these details fall into one of three categories. So they're going to be something you know, something you have, or something you are. So something you know is going to be like a PIN number. So when you go to an ATM at the bank, you have to put a PIN number in as well as your credit or your account card. And that is a way that they can verify it's you. It works the same way with the multi-factor authentication. And security questions would also fall under this category. When we talk about something you have, this is going to be like when you put in your password and then the website, or in this case, the email, they request to send you a one-time code that you would then type in. 
Um, so this is usually done via text message. And so the thought behind that is that you usually have your phone on you. So you should be able to put that code in if you are who you say you are. And then something you are is going to be like using touch ID or like your fingerprint or facial recognition that is built into your device. So now that we've gotten into our email, what can we do to keep ourselves safe? One of the big issues with email comes from getting spam or specifically scam emails. So one of the things that we want to be able to do is evaluate these emails. So some of them, it's very obvious that they are either trying to get something from you or they're not from who they say they're from. Some of them are really obvious. So those might even already end up in your spam folder just based on your email service provider and their information that they have. But if you have an email that it looks like it's from a legitimate company and you're just not quite sure whether it's real or not, there are things you can do to evaluate the email and then decide how to proceed. So you will have to open the email, and that is okay. It's usually considered okay to open the email. You just don't want to click on any links or open any attachments. So if you're not for sure that it is from a trusted source, don't click the links, don't open any attachments. So that's the first thing. Now I'm going to show you a example of a spam email and we're gonna go through together and I will show you what types of things to look for. So I have this Harbor Freight email in my account and I've never been to Harbor Freight. So that's my first clue that this is probably at least spam, possibly a scam because I did not sign up for their emails, newsletters, anything like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and open it so we can take a look. So the first thing I should really note is that the subject says you've been selected. So I didn't enter anything, which means I'm probably not being selected for something that I didn't enter. Um, but there are a few other things I can look at. There is an address at the bottom of this email. It also says that this message is in French and do I want to translate it? I don't speak French. I've never put my email in French. That's another flag. So next I'm going to look at the information in the to from field. And this is often kind of collapsed. So I will have to click on either the to or the from email to get all of that information. The first thing I see is that the beginning of the Harbor Freight email says Stockholm News. So that is not anything connected to that business. The reply to email is also not something connected to the business. So from here, I pretty much know that this is someone pretending to be who they are not. I could go ahead and mark this as spam, but before I do that, I'm going to look at a few other things in the email. Another thing I can look at is, it's kind of hard to see it, but what I noticed is the Harbor Freight logo on this email, if I go to the actual website, they're slightly differently colored. So the red is a slightly brighter color in this email than it is on the website. And you may notice that even the text right below it is in the same color that's on the website. So 
these are little things that could easily be missed, but they are all indicators that this email is not coming from who it says it's coming from. So the best thing to do when I realize this is to mark the email as spam. This should send it directly to your spam folder. If it doesn't, you can delete it. Um, but what it does when you mark it as spam or depending on your email, it may say junk. But either of those, it's going to alert the email service. So in this case, we're using Google and letting them know that this email sender has been flagged as a spam email or a dangerous email. So with that, it's going to either block that email sender completely or it's going to put that email directly into your spam folder so you won't see it unless you go there. So I'm going to go back to the Harbor Freight email, and this is actually a different email that looks almost exactly the same. And I'm going to show you how to determine whether a link in an email is legitimate. So I have the email open, and as I kind of hover my mouse over the area where there is a link to be clicked, you might notice that my mouse changed from the pointer to a hand. That means that there is a link, and if I click anything, it'll take me to that link. So it is actually a large part of this email. It's not even just where the image or where the button is. So I can look down in the bottom left corner of my screen, and that is gonna show me where this URL goes. One thing to note is it begins with bit.com. LY. This is a service that can help you shorten a URL. It's probably not going to be used by official companies. Companies are going to want you to know that they're taking you to their website. So that is one thing. The other thing is it does give us the option to unsubscribe on this email, but when I hover over the word unsubscribe, which is normally what you would click, it's the exact same URL as above. So when I move my mouse, it doesn't even change. And that is also not normal for a legitimate email. So when you get a spam or junk email, your immediate reaction is probably going to be, let me unsubscribe from this so I can stop getting these emails. And what I would say to that is be very careful about clicking that unsubscribe link in the email because, again, could be taking you to a dangerous website. The best thing to do is going to be to go to the options on your email. So I am looking for my more options icon. And when I click it in this actual email, I have options to delete, block, report as spam, report as phishing. I could choose any of these options, or I could just click the report spam icon that's in the upper menu along the top of the email. And if you are using an email service other than Gmail, you should still have these options. They may have a slightly different name or slightly different icons, but they're going to, in general, be placed in the same sort of areas.
And then as far as this address at the bottom goes, I can open just a new tab and search for this address in Google. And sometimes that's very enlightening. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Let me type in the address. And now we're seeing that it looks like this is something in a strip mall. Um, when I click on the street view, it looks like it is a post net store. So that looks like maybe it's a sort of shipping store or mailing service. Definitely not Harbor Freight. So as you can see, there are a lot of indicators that you can look for on your email. Another thing to look for is misspellings or weird grammar. So if there are a bunch of spelling errors or the grammar just sounds weird when you're reading it, this is another indicator that this is not a legitimate email. One little mistake that happens sometimes, but if it's a bunch or if it just sounds weird, probably good to stay away from it. So these have just been a few tips on how to secure your email account and identify potentially nefarious emails so hopefully it has given you some things to look for and a little more confidence in determining whether an email is legitimate or not. That's it for today's video. If you liked it, make sure you let us know by following our MCPL 360 page on Facebook and our MCPL MO channel on YouTube. We premiere new videos every Wednesday and Friday at 1 p.m. And if you miss the live event, you can always find all of our videos on YouTube on one of our many technology-related playlists on our YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you again next time.